Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northland Images, and uh, in this short video I'm going to have a look at a neutral density ND1000 filter I was just recently testing. Um, it's a different filter from other ND1000s I've looked at. Uh, not that the filtration is any different, it's perfectly good. Slight colour cast that you may want to connect, correct, but you get that of almost all of them. Uh, this one's from a company called KNF, KNF Concept, Kent Faith. Um, and it's a magnetic filter. Now, that's not magnetic as it has any effect on the light going through it, but it's how it attaches. Um, normal uh, filters, uh, one of the uses I have for ND1000, as I'll show, is for when I'm taking photographs of places with lots of people in, and I want to de-emphasize the, uh, the people. Uh, an ND1000 lets me use a lot longer exposure, 10 stops worth of, um, of longer exposure. So I can easily, in daylight conditions like this, take shots at 6 seconds, 8 seconds, 10 seconds or more. Now, 10 seconds you get a lot of movement of most people, as I show. But the key for this is that I'm using, for the example here, this is a Canon 5DS, and um, unlike some mirrorless cameras, uh, once you put an ND1000 filter on the front, you cannot see a thing through the viewfinder. Um, even with uh, mirrorless, uh, you're going to get some effects caused by the low light levels. You may get colour shifts, things like that. But at least you can actually see what's going on. But for this one, it's a normal 82mm uh, fit. This is a 24mm tilt shift lens. Uh, I use this for shots to keep things vertical when I'm looking upwards. Uh, classic architectural lens. I've got lots of videos about tilt shift lenses and I've written a book about them. So if you want information about these lenses, have a look at some of my videos and you'll see more about what you can do. But I'm just using it here. It's 82mm, it's this fit. Now, I'm using vertical shift and that's so the lens is shifting upwards like that. Now, how about filter? Well, as with all ND1000 filters, it's pitch black. If you hold it up, you can see a uh, light through it, a bright light through it, but uh, don't use it, don't lose it for looking at the sun. You need, I think, something on the path of ND100,000 or something for safely looking at the sun uh, directly. Uh, do not use filters like this for eclipses and the like. Anyway, normal screw fit filter. Um, yep, this this is always it's it's been around for years, and it's one of the reasons I find filters a hassle sometimes. Now I have got ones where you drop the filter in the front, but you have a contraption on the front of the lens, and that's even more of a hassle. I'm not a great filter user. Um, I really don't like the uh, seascapes that look like the sea has been replaced by a pool of fog. Um, they fall into the done that, yeah, that's interesting, next category of things. Tastes differ, I know, but uh, in general, I like my seas, my water, I like it crisp. I don't want much of a blur in it. I will sometimes do it, but certainly for shots like this, I may well want some blur. Uh, not of the buildings, but of the people. So anyway, I've put the filter on there. It has a lens cap. Now, if I take the lens cap off, it's magnetic. That's great. So I'll take that off. There's the filter. The filter itself is also magnetic. As you can see, no light comes through it. So I've got this very, very thin adapter ring in place. And I could use other magnetic filters like this, circular polarizer, maybe an ND8 or an ND, you know, a lower number one if I was shooting video and I wanted to use shoot wide open. Or I was using flash in daylight and using it for fill. But that's that's neutral density filters. I've looked at a few of those in some of my articles. But as I say, I don't use them a great deal. But for this, there it is, we have the magnetic adapter on. There we go, filter is in place and it's solid. It's quite a pull to get that off. And one other advantage I found when I was using it, works as an ordinary lens cap as well. So there we go, take that off, keep me pocket, goes back. Decide I want a filter, that's 
that attached and there's the lens cap attached. Um, now, I'm not a photographer who spends, often spends a lot of time thinking about photos. Certainly my landscape photography is not something um, I sit around for hours planning. Uh, I regard, uh, mentioned elsewhere, I regard uh, landscape photography to me is just like street photography but on a different scale. It's about the moment, it's about seeing things. Being able to just quickly swap filters like that is actually quite nice. Now, that's the filter. What results do you get with it? Well, it's, it's an ND1000, so I, I've done quite a few other bits and pieces. I've done some articles about using it. But here's a shot here. This is at 250th of a second. As you'd expect, people crisp, uh, everything verticals, all nice and vertical. That's the clock tower in Leicester city centre, there's a place where I live in the UK. A um, bit of work going on here and that, people just walking around. This is, uh, it's quarter past four according to the clock, so, uh, you know, late afternoon. So that's that. Let's take this to 0.8 of a second. Now I said 10 stops. Now I have to think about this every time. You can take a table with you if you like, but at 10 stops. So that's a 250th, so 10 stops, that's a 125th, 60th, 30th, 15th, 8th, quarter, half, I'm going to keep going here, uh, 1 second, 2 seconds, 4 seconds. So the filter on its own would let me, uh, without changing the camera settings, that's, yeah, use your hands for this, uh, that's 10 stops Well, so a 4 second exposure. But anyway, that's a 250th. If I drop it down to 0.8 of a second, we've got quite a nice bit of blur of people, but you can see people who are standing around. And there's some, some people trying to sell stuff here. Um, and there's somebody looking at a phone. And they're relatively sharp. Now, 0.8 of a second, any movement of them, you're gonna see a bit of blur. But we have got some blur of people walking around here. There's quite a lot of people, so you, they don't disappear completely. They just make a bit of a fog. So you, it's not a way of, of, of seeing through crowds of people. Now that's 0.8 of a second. Take it to 1.6 seconds. Looks like I got the wrong photo. There we go, that's better. I'll take it to four seconds. Now you can see a sort of real fog of people here. Uh, there are still a few people standing around who haven't moved much in four seconds, such as this lady in the corner here and the guy looking at his phone. So that's four seconds. Um, what you do start noticing is that people do not move smoothly. Uh, this brings about what I've called the feet problem. When you take longer exposures and people are walking through the scene, what you don't think of is as people walk along, the feet, every time it hits the ground, the foot is relatively stationary for a significant part of their gait until they put the other foot down, lift the foot up and put that one down, which means that you get this blur of movement, but you get legs and feet more prominent than the rest of people that are moving continuously through the scene. And if I take this to uh, an, a different version of it, four seconds again, um, you can see people with white trainers on really show up. There are just a series of feet. You can see feet all over the place. You look in the distance, you can see feet. Now, it's an interesting effect and it can look interesting at night, um, all kinds of times when you might want this, but it's the long exposure foot problem in that people think, ah, oh, I'll do a long exposure so people vanish. And they tend to think of some of the photographs taken in the 19th century with long exposures where you don't see any people uh, because the exposure has been long enough. Now there, that's a truly long exposure. You may need several minutes to completely get rid of people, uh, depending on the situation. But certainly four seconds there is not enough. Now, if you take it to 10 seconds, you get a bit more, but I found that in general, you need to take it to at least 20, 30 seconds to reliably get rid of moving people. And even then, you will find one person in the corner of your shot who just happened to be sitting somewhere and didn't move much for 10, 20 seconds. It happens. So there we go, that's the distance there. You can do some interesting effects as well. And I'll just finish off with this one here whilst I was out. Uh, this is um, 
Looking at traffic, this is a 1.6 second exposure, if I remember rightly. And I've caught an ambulance coming on. There's a hospital just a quarter of a mile up the road here. And on its way, blue flashing lights. Um, I've started the exposure just as it was starting to speed up. And it sped off past me. And we've got the blue flashing lights and we've got the blur of it. Uh, an interesting looking picture. Um, stuff like this, yes, all you can do with uh, long exposures like this is take lots of pictures because you can't necessarily tell what they're going to come out like. One of the great advantages of doing this digitally. But uh, there you have it. Uh, that's a KNF, KNF uh, Nano X filter, uh, a magnetic filter, and this is an ND1000. And there we go. There is the ND1000. There's the lens cap. Keep that in my camera bag. Anyway, I hope these little videos are of interest. Uh, please feel free to ask questions, comment, uh, whatever. Uh, there are usually more detailed articles with specifications and the likes and uh, um, on the North Light Images website uh, with links to various stuff that I've looked at, how to use them, articles, example photos and everything. But uh, if you find this useful, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, much appreciated and uh, goodbye.